Hello friends. Today I want to talk about isms and abandoning them. Now an ism is like a rigid school of thought which has prescribed limits of debate and um, once you accept membership or identify as part of this school it becomes very difficult to have probing searching thought because oftentimes to do that you'll have to go against the tenets, dogma, and doctrine of your school of thought of choice. Um, I call them isms because often they end with an ism notion like capitalism, communism, anarchism, feminism, men's rights, activism, but it could also be things that end with an ology like you know, Scientology or Christianity or you know Islam. The suffix doesn't matter. The idea is basically a rigid school of thought that doesn't uh, that has limits of debate. So I guess first what I want to talk about is um, the way in which you know there's this mistaken identity or mistaken assumption that identifying as a certain school is somehow empowering. I mean, certainly to some extent you feel fellowship with the fellow members of your school of thought, right? But in a way it individuates you because you're actually separating yourself from other people, you know, and it makes you separate and apart, which really any solutions that you want to get to, if you're really looking for solutions in earnest, you can't pursue them in a way that separates you from other people. You know, you got to take care of everybody or it's so much uh, activism and, um, you know, work in vain. Um, <clears throat> another thing is too is that these schools of thought, like any school, are places to go and learn, okay? They all have something interesting and important to say and some, some, some part of the truth. But like a school, like a real life school, a school of thought is not a place to go and put down roots and stay forever. You take what you need and you cultivate your own philosophy based on that, right? Always with the mentality of keeping your mind open to new ideas and never holding on to any fact or um, idea beyond the point of which it's proven false, you know? And oftentimes, when you're part of a rigid school of beliefs, especially when you made um, an identity association, like I am, a, you know, a pacifist or I am a communist or, or whatever it is, if you made that identity association, well, you know, any challenge to those beliefs, because they become beliefs at that point as opposed to thoughts and ideas, any challenge to those beliefs becomes a personal attack on you and it makes it very hard for you to remain open to new ideas because you become so entrenched in the way you've done things. <clears throat> Um, I want to just talk about briefly, go to Bruce Lee, and I, know, I know I um, kind of defer to him quite a bit, but his fighting style that he created, Jeet Kune Do, or the way of the intercepting fist is what it's translated to, or as he described it, the form without form, style without styles. He was obviously talking about fighting and um, martial arts and stuff, but there's a way in which that same philosophy pertains to um, intellectual pursuits, academia, you know. Don't be a slave to a style or a school of thought that's provably detrimental and obsolete. Okay, we have so many institutions in our society based on, that were developed hundreds of years ago. Well, guess what? We know a lot more than we did back then. So our systems that we have today should reflect our current emergent knowledge, right? So <clears throat> he said, basically, cultivate a style from the ground up, you know, um, use what works, discard what doesn't, and add what is uniquely yours. I'm pretty sure he said that because the internet said he said that. So, um... Yeah, that's all I want to say about that. Avoid these ism notions. Don't don't feel you need to be part of an intellectual gang, okay? Be a rational, thinking human being, and that's it. You know, you can't help if people try to lump you in that category of like, oh, well, you're just a, an idealist, or you're just a, a, you know, an anarchist, or you're just this or that. People are always going to try and do that because they can't think of a way to refute your argument. That's just a way for them to simplify and, and dismiss you. And in a lot of ways, labeling you as something, whether it's, you know, something ostensibly positive, that's still an ad hominem attack. It's still an attack on you because it's trying to lump you into a box and, and, and dismiss your rat rational um, thinking mind. The worst thing you can do is accept that label and, and identify as that. It's not empowering. It diminishes you. Okay? That's all I want to say about that. I would love to see some comments. And as always, please subscribe. And as always, please subscribe.